In this video, Christian will show you the digital painting techniques he uses for editing eyes when doing book cover work in Photoshop. I never use a tablet or do any digital painting stuff at all, so I'll be your guide today and sharing my observations as the video rolls through. Today, we all learn. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy! Okay, so we're rocking and rolling in real time for this one and the artwork today is being done by Christian Bentelan and I am your host, Dean Samid, also a book cover artist, but here alongside you to learn some bits today as these are techniques that I never use. So for this walkthrough, I see Christian has a good number of different eyeballs there, different models, and he'll be going through them one by one to show you how he implements these eye enhancing techniques using his Wacom tablet. Uh, if you're interested in knowing what tablet he uses, I've put a link to that in the description below. So looking at the flow for his brush, that's at 60%. He's created a new layer above the eyeball and set that to color on the layers palette. A nice shortcut for creating new layers is shift command and n that's shift control and n if you are on a pc so he's tweaking with the opacity um, he's grabbed a very vivid green from the color palette to the left i see he uses a color wheel that's something else that i never do i've never got that color wheel um, in the top right what i'll do is i'll ask christian um, to see whether that's part of photoshop or whether it's a third party plugin so I'll be sure to include that in the description as well. So Christian has got a hue saturation adjustment layer going on there and that is clipped to the layer below. So that means anything he does on that adjustment layer will be limited to whatever paint strokes are on that color layer below. To easily add um, a clipping mask, you just go Alt and click between the two layers so that means the adjustment or the layer above will only apply to what's going on below. So he's moved on to another model now. New layer above, he's set that layer blend mode to color and he's painting manually using his Wacom tablet to enhance the blues of the model's eyes. So Christian is an urban fantasy book cover specialist. So a lot of the models and characters on those book covers normally have a, a magical mystical supernatural nature to them so this is a process that he'll be using quite frequently in producing his book cover work and he does lots of book covers every single week incredibly prolific artist so he's zipping through these quite fast so we've seen the same technique in play new layer set to color painted over using a more vivid tone and for this one it looks like he's gone to normal because a color won't really work on a very dark iris that we have here so he's got a flow of about 60 i'm assuming he's using the pressure sensitivity on his tablet and he's manually painting in because the underlying eyeball is very dark. Um, a, a color layer above that won't really do a lot. And he's got that color wheel in action there to select the tones, be it the lighter or darker tones. Not something I personally do, but when I do crack out the Wacom tablet later this year, that may be something I will be stealing from his workflow. So like I said before, you're learning and I'm learning as well because I am a heathen and I don't do much digital digital painting stuff at all. Okay, so with that base layer um, painted with the normal tone, he can then add a color layer above that will have an impact because he's got something to grab onto. 
on the layer below because he painted using normal blend mode with a flow of about 60 and probably with the pressure sensitivity on the tablet so that's interesting that he's demonstrated a much darker eye tone to enhance it without using the old school photoshop techniques of just duplicating it and setting it to screen because sometimes you can get a lot of pixel degradation going on and things start to look a little bit garbled so we have a lighter green eyeball here is he naming his layers um not yet okay if that was me i'm ocd i'd be putting all of that into layer groups but you guys know what i'm like i'm very very pedantic as the team will tell you right we're going for something uh, a little bit more wild here a very shocking orangey red like a fire eye um that was one of the most common requests i got when i was doing book covers was can you make the characters eyes glow and i always thought everybody asked for this it's not very original um that was a little observation that i had when i was doing these covers the most common request i ever got was the client saying oh and the character has glowing eyes so here we go hue saturation adjustment layer uh, my favorite method for adding an adjustment layer is to use a small circle icon down to the bottom right of the layers palette it's nice and fast and here we have a another color so we're repeating the same process for this the, the main variation was for the very dark eye because there wasn't um a base tone for the color to grab onto so we have the hue saturation adjustment layer there and he's simply grabbing the hue slider he's got the saturation at the level that he wants and then he's actively changing the tone using the hue slider of the hue saturation adjustment layer if you're not familiar adjustment layers are brilliant because it's what we call non-destructive editing so at any time you can go back and tweak them without damaging the original pixels it is the smart way to work when you're in raster graphics software like photoshop a new color layer manually painted on and then the same process hue saturation to tweak the colors and then once we've gone through these steps of all of these eyeballs i believe that christian will be taking things a step further and manually painting in iris details to go on top of all these eyes so it's good that he's selected um, a good number of different eye styles to demonstrate all of these processes together because with different projects or different commissions there, there are different technical challenges that you're going to face so this is a good demo because you get to check out a lot of different eye colors so the process has been the same for each of these going through methodically tweaking the colors using the color um just a color layer and then hue saturation with a clipping mask and we're nearing the end of this now so we're gonna zip through here we have another darker iris see how it what he does with this one okay so he's going for a a shocking red a very dark red interesting he instead of using a shortcut he actually right clicks on that and when create clipping masks that's interesting i've never seen that done before i've only just recently started using clipping masks in my own workflow um i was really late to the parade with that one there, there's a lot of things i was late to the parade with um not just clipping masks curves that's one i still have to get my head around i'm a so-called photoshop professional and i don't use curves in my workflow so I'd be the laughing stock of the entire Photoshop community. More stylized tones here. Switching through hue, checking out what works. Okay, so the base tones have been laid down for all of the eyeballs. Let's see what he does next.
See, this is why you got to use layer groups, people. Okay, add on. He's sampled a light tone from the iris. I can't see what brush he's selected. I know he's using the color wheel there. So up at the top left, you can see um, he's cycling dynamically through the brush sizes. It went from five to three to four. I don't actually know how he's doing that. There may be a hotkey on his tablet that's allowing him, uh, maybe he's just using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So if you're old school like me, and you use a keyboard and mouse, then the square bracket keys is a fast way to change your brush size. So that was cool. He did that pretty fast. The blend mode for that, for the iris details, is set to overlay. Okay, we've got another add-on here. He's selected a tone, a lighter tone. The brush, the brush size is changing from three, four, five, six, and seven. And in, I wonder if the brush size is changing because of the pressure that is pressing down as opposed to him because it seems like it's going quite fast it may be the case that the brush tip size is changing dependent on how hard he's pressing down i know he's got one of those fancy syntax so it could be a, a feature on that that's interesting this is quite a different format this he does the work and then i analyze it and try to understand and relay my thoughts to you guys on this video okay so he's going for more vertical strokes with this one picking out the details the the tip size is dynamically changing I, I think my theory is right I think that is dependent on the pressure that he's putting down on those iris strokes I didn't see him open up the brush panel to have any fancy specialist brushes or whether there are any um, shape dynamics on those strokes. It'd be interesting to find out. What's the color tone here? So looking at the color wheel to the top right and the foreground color to the left, it's a very, very light yellow. Another add-on. Will this be overlay or will it remain normal? Perfect. 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 That was fast. He does this so fast. There's already quite a lot of detail in this iris here. So we'll see what he does with this one. using the color wheel pulling out the lights a few scratchy lines to enhance that iris add a bit of detail to those reflective elements and because it's a, a lighter sh shade of blue yeah he went quite light with that Right, we're going, we're going for the demon eye. The color mode there, the, the layer mode, should I say, is normal. And I see he's going for like a, a demonic cat's eye thing going on here. And there he had some presets. So he had something set up. So nothing majorly fancy there, literally digitally painting those elements using the lighter tones for the iris lines and just scratching them in incrementally to build up. And then when you zoom out, it has the photorealistic effect. And how often do you zoom in this close when you're looking at a digital artwork? Veins being done manually all on the same layer. Multiply uh, blend mode would be good for that to really bleed that into the elements below But it looks good the way that he's doing it definitely 
So this is the year. This is the year that I've got to get into all this stuff. Most definitely. Pretty same premise as the ones before. Lighter overlay details. I think we're nearing the end of this video, guys. So a bit of a different format here today. And there, the little individual flex. And is he removing elements? He's using a darker blue. So as opposed to using an eraser, he's using a, a darker blue to etch in those iris details. So that's a wrap for today from me and Christian Bentelan. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different format for this video. Stay tuned for lots more guys. And if you enjoyed this one, please throw us a like and subscribe. So that's it. Catch you at the next video. See you then.